Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi everyone, welcome back to Think Global China edition uh, where we're looking at the China opportunity for small business. Now in today's session we're talking about which businesses may thrive by expanding into China. Um, and I've been joined today by my friends Greg Mickelson and Jet Radley, both welcome. Hi, Hi David. Hi David. Now today we're going to talk about getting into China. I'm, I'm going to start by talking about uh, the China opportunity for small business owners. We're going to look at the different paths you can take for selling to Chinese consumers. We're going to look at an overview of what China already has and what it could potentially need from you. We're going to look at different industry sectors and see the, those that are likely to be particularly successful in China. Um, we're go I'm going to make sure we touch on how even your small business could benefit from a China strategy. We're going to look at specific changes you could make to be China ready. And finally, we're going to look at the e-commerce environment and how we think that has changed the opportunity and perhaps opened up the China market, even for a small business like yours. So let's get started. I, I'd like to start by saying that um, it's really important uh, for small business owners around the world to start thinking about China. Uh, if we go back 10 or 20 years, it's been all about big business, large institutions, state-owned enterprises, government-backed organizations, investing around the world, participating in global markets. And it's been very hard for foreign companies to get into China unless they've got the similar size and scale that's necessary. But now we're seeing this opportunity for small business. The private sector is opening up, entrepreneurs are becoming a lot more active, investors are going around the world, and now that's creating opportunities for all of us in small business to start looking at China. So this session is really about trying to identify where those opportunities might be. So maybe I could start with you, Jet, and say, what are the different paths that businesses can take to selling uh, to Chinese consumers? Where do you get started? So there are a range of different ways to start selling to Chinese consumers. I think people often overlook maybe the easiest starting point, which is in their home market. So looking at selling to Chinese international students, to recent uh, migrants to their home country, and to more established Chinese communities. I think for a small business, it can be a really great way to test the market to see if there's an appetite there for their product or their service. Um, and then beyond that, uh, e-commerce and the more traditional bricks and mortar in, a ho in the Chinese market. Yeah, we're finding that, aren't we? There's a lot of tourists and um, independent travelers and mm. rich people traveling around the world. It's a good opportunity for you to start testing your product. That's a great place Absolutely. to start without even leaving home. Do you have anything to add to that, Greg? Yeah, I think... Um, there can be a lot of costs involved in international expansion and that's mm. why people do get turned off. And exactly um, like Jet said, being able to engage with the market, um, get a taste for what they want, what they're interested in. Um, tastes do um, vary depending on different cultures and countries and you can't assume that a product that you might be selling to your home market is definitely going to sell well in the Chinese market or to Chinese consumers. Uh, so it's a great way to test out the market. Um, and it's a sizable market that's traveling internationally each year and it's growing. Um, it's not to be kind of um, overlooked and, and say, oh, just tourism. I mean, the Chinese tourism market is huge with uh, about 100 million tourists traveling internationally um, and, and growing each year. Mm. And it gives you a great opportunity to start practicing and engaging with uh, Chinese customers for the first time without having to go anywhere. Yeah, I agree Absolutely. with that. So let's talk about online and offline because yep. this is a fast changing dynamic. Um, in the old days, we had to you know, go through a whole lot of process to get your product in. These days, with, with online platforms, mm. you can actually get through that process a lot quicker. So what are some of the advantages of online versus offline? Mm. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I think as Greg just mentioned, the cost of setting up a bricks and mortar store in China is, is quite large and also the, the process that you need to go through to get the right cert certification to sell your products. So online, I mean, there are a, a varying array of ways to do this. You can sell both online straight into the market, cross-border transaction, or you can 
take your product to, a, say, a bonded warehouse in a free trade zone and sell your product that way, kind of eliminating some of the, the tariffs and the taxes and the, and the red tape that you might have uh, if you were selling direct from your country. Mm. Yeah, I might add that e-commerce in China is really the direction where it's going. So yeah. um, it's not, it's unlike in the West or uh, where, where still most people are probably purchasing things in store and, and e-commerce represents a smaller portion. In China, it's growing day by day and it's really the future of, of um, commerce in yeah. China. Um, they've got really great delivery systems um, so that products do end up at customers' doors the next day or within 48 hours, um, not waiting weeks. So the service is really good in China. The infrastructure's there, mm -hmm. the demand's there, and people are used to using it. They're a very mobile-savvy um, population uh, with a lot of people logging online on their mobile to purchase products um, online to have delivered to their house. So it's the way that the market is, is demanding to purchase things. So it is definitely something that businesses should consider. Yeah, that's a good point you make actually, mm. Jet, about uh, free trade zones. This is quite a relatively new concept yeah. and I think we're all still mm. trying to get our head around what it means. But my, my take on that is that the Chinese have been a bit frustrated at how hard it is for foreigners to get into the China market. They want to make it easier. Mm -hmm. So their way of doing that is to create these free trade zones to give people a, perhaps an easier entry mm. point. And we've yeah. seen that in Shanghai. We're starting to see that in other places too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that there are some restrictions about uh, the amount of money you can spend in a free trade zone. Uh, but for a company starting out, it seems like the best place to go. Yeah. So at a relatively low cost, you could get your product into China, onto the shelves, mm. in a free trade zone environment mm. where people can come and taste it, can sample it, yeah. can uh, look at it. Um, and then, of course, if they want to buy it, they then take it across uh, customs into the market. But at least it gives you that sort of initial entry point. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think uh, the Chinese consumer is becoming more aware of these free trade zones and they're seeking them out and they're looking to go there to buy products that they might not find in other parts of China. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you anything to say yeah, about free I'll trade zones? Yeah. I think, um, as you were speaking before about cross-border transactions mm -hmm. where products are being sold, say, from the home country being shipped into China, so people might purchase it online and then it's packaged and shipped into China, there can be a lot of costs involved with that. Mm. And um, it can often also take longer because mm. the, the products are traveling yeah. further from the time that they're purchased online to, to when they meet the doorstep of the consumer. By having your product in China in a bonded warehouse, um, you can reduce the costs and speed up the time that the yeah. products get to um, consumers. Now, the only, I suppose, things to consider is that you will need to ship over um, perhaps a whole container load of products first, which is a, a bit more of an investment to have it there and stored. Um, although storage in bonded warehouses is quite, um, the pricing is quite reasonable for businesses and the, the government has set up the initiative so that it is mm. easy for businesses to get their products in there. And similarly, um, Tmall, which is an online e-commerce platform or marketplace um, in China, they, they've set up bonded warehouses for, uh, for merchants to use. So they facilitate the process and mm. make it easier for companies. Um, so you're not kind of left having to sort it all out yourself. Yeah. yeah, and this is a big step forward for small business. It does mm. give people an opportunity to do this in a much more cost-effective way. So if we've got our business owners out there thinking, how do I get started? Where, how would they start the process of going online and uh, building a China brand and presence yeah. in some way? What, what's the first step? Well, I would say that um, if it's a product which is relatively new to the Chinese market, you want to get um, exposure to your brand first. Um, mm. So you can't just assume that if you set up a website and perhaps put .cn on the end that you're going to get a mm. flood of traffic coming in buying your product online. Um, there's a lot of online marketplaces. Um, there's a lot of stores. And Chinese people are quite savvy in what they choose to buy and what not to buy. Mm. So you really need to make sure that you position yourself well online and that you're getting the right traffic. Now, um, Statistics show that there's still an overwhelming majority of people purchasing from marketplaces. So um, like what I was talking about, um, Tmall or JD.com, they're similar to like an Amazon. Um, Amazon's also in China at the moment, there's Amazon.cn. So these marketplaces is where most Chinese consumers are purchasing um, products online and it's mostly because of a trust element. They um, Consumers want to be sure that they're going to get the product that they pay for and that um, it's going to come from a reliable source. Mm. So 
Um, we're finding about 90% um, of people in the Chinese market are still purchasing from marketplaces, uh, whereas about 10% would purchase from their from a. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.